The word joins is talking about sex. And it doesn't just mean having sex with a prostitute. It's anyone who you aren't married to. Remember, God created sex to bond a husband and wife to each other physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So what do you think happens when you have sex with someone you aren't married to? Once you lose your virginity, there's no getting it back. That's a beautiful gift, a priceless gift that you want to be able to give to your future husband or wife. The greatest gift you can give them on your wedding night. One day, I will give my purity to my future wife on our wedding night, and it's going to be beautiful. And I want you to be able to do the same with your future spouse on your wedding night. But there are many Christian couples who have trouble in their marriages because one of them wasn't a virgin when they were married. Yes, it's true that God will forgive you of any sin you repent of. That means turning away and not doing it anymore. And confess to Him. And He can bring real healing. And there are students in this room that have already fallen into sexual sin. And my word to you today is that Jesus will forgive you if you re repent and name it to Him. Confess it to Him. He will forgive you. And there's healing to be found in Him. But the consequences or scars of your decision will follow you the rest of your life. And remember, sexual immorality isn't just going all the way. So that means the consequences of lusting in your mind, looking at pornography and other inappropriate images, and masturbating can follow you the rest of your life and negatively affect your future marriage. That should be serious to you. Guys, let me talk to the fellows. There are many Christian men whose marriages are in serious trouble because they are haunted by the inappropriate images they viewed and lustful sins they committed years earlier, even in middle school. Do you want that following you into your marriage years from now? The consequences or scars follow you the rest of your life and will affect your future marriage. Think about that the next time you're tempted in those areas. Guys, the next time you're at school, maybe even tomorrow, and there's that girl that you really like, and you start lusting after and thinking inappropriate thoughts about her in class. Ladies, the next time that guy you think is so cool at school, so popular, texts you and asks you to send him inappropriate pictures of yourself, and you do it because I think I love him. Guys, the next time you go over to your friend's, your buddy's house, there's a bunch of you over, you're playing football outside, and then you go inside, and your friend, he says in his house, in his bedroom, he's got a cool thing for you guys to see, and it's a, it's a porn video. And you guys are like, oh, that's so cool. And you know it's wrong, you know it's sin, you know it's lust, but you're afraid of what they'll say if you leave. So you watch it, and you lust. Your freshman year of high school, you're with your first boyfriend. He starts feeling you up, or guys, you start feeling up the girl, or start going around second base. Lust. You're at your senior prom, and from what your friends tell you at lunch, you're the only one that hasn't gone all the way with a guy or girl. And man, that's, that's, that's horrible. I don't want to graduate from high school being the only one, being different, being set apart. So at your senior prom, you decide to sneak into the bathroom with that guy or girl and, and have sex and lose your virginity in a stall. How romantic. <laughs> and you give it up. Is the bond of this tape 
as strong as it was before I started touching it to the carpet. Let's see. If you commit sexual sin before you're married, will the bond between your future husband and wife be as strong as it could have been? Answer is no. First Thessalonians 4, 3 through 8, the Apostle Paul says this, God's will is for you to be holy, so stay away from all sexual sin. Then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion like the pagans who do not know God or in his ways. Never harm or cheat a Christian brother in this matter by violating his wife, that's adultery. For the Lord avenges, avenges all such sins as we have solemnly warned you before. This is a warning. God has called us to live holy lives, not impure lives. Therefore, anyone who refuses to live by these rules is not disobeying human teaching, but is rejecting God who gives His Spirit to you. If you have sexual sin, and sexual sin before you're married, the sexual bond between your future spouse will not be as strong. Scars consequences. So how do we follow God's plan for sex? Check out verse 5. Lustful passion like the pagans. Pagans are unbelievers, people who, who hate God, who don't live for God. Um, that would be the majority of people at your public school. Lustful passion. You guys know anybody at school? Lustful passions? Yeah, so the Bible's pretty relevant for a 2,000-year-old uh, book, isn't it? When you compare it to our world's view of sex. Now, when I think of this image, I think of another creature. And guys, if there's our guys in Russia, they you know what I'm talking about. You might know what, what creature I'm thinking of? A male dog. Oh. <laughs> what nasty thing do you see male dogs doing in public that embarrasses their owners? Humping everything. everything. Other dogs, other animals, human legs, even pillows. Mm. Disgusting, right? One of the reasons why I'm a cat guy. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how that grosses out people. But when a guy, a human, a human guy does it, he does basically the same thing as that dog. When he does it with girls, they call the player. You're real, man. What? Did I miss something? Since when is being a slave to your sin nature a sign of power. You're under the chains of your evil lusts and desires. How's that a sign of power? Not surprisingly, the world has it backwards again. It's not a sign of power. It's a sign of weakness and slavery. So let's start our next point. Guys and girls, get some self-control, please. Don't be a slave to your sinful lusts. A real man proves his strength and courage by controlling his sinful desires. Next point, we've already mentioned it. We need to run from sexual sin. Follow the story of Joseph in the Old Testament. Joseph was sold into slavery. He's living in a guy named Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife comes on to him in a big way. Day after day after day. One day she corners and says, sleep with me now. Temptation. Joseph goes, this would be a great sin against God, I couldn't do it. Runs out of the house, leaves his coat behind, later gets him in trouble because he left his coat. Just ran out of the house. Follow Joseph's example. Run from sexual sin. Guys, when you're at that house and your friend's watching porn, it's cool guys day, right? Don't sit there and go, hey guys, I don't know if that's the best thing. Can we go back up to play football, please? Please? Uh, no, doesn't say to do that. It says get out of there. Call your parents, get out. Right away. Because sexual sin is such a big deal, it can scar us the rest of our lives and into our marriages. It's no wonder God wants us to run away from it. Because He wants what's best for us. The decision to experiment sexually or to have sex before marriage carries all kinds of possible consequences. Spiritually, we become disconnected from God. It leads us to shame and regret, which are not from God, they're from Satan. God does not cause us to feel shame and regret. And it leads to physical consequences, including pregnancy and 
sexually transmitted diseases. That's what God's trying to protect you from in your future marriage. But following God's plan is not a one-time decision. That's why we don't do purity pledges in J.I. We're going to talk more about this at, at uh, Pure Beauty for the Girls and Guys. We're going to talk more about this one depth. We're not going to take purity pledges. It's research has shown one-time decisions don't work. You may be able to resist sexual temptation today, but tomorrow will bring new and different challenges. That's why you need to remember that following God's plan for sex isn't just a one-time decision. Each day, you need God's strength through the Holy Spirit to help you remain focused and to help you recognize those moments when you need to run away. Sometimes literally run, sometimes mentally run away. Remove yourself from the temptation. In order to stay pure, the Bible tells us to read it and obey what God says in it. Those of you who are in e-groups, are you reading your one-minute Bibles? You want to live pure? You need to read your one-minute Bibles. Those of you who are in e-groups, I can guarantee you you're struggling in your faith. You're not meant to live alone. You're not meant to be alone in your faith. Get to e-groups Wednesday night. Move whatever, move things, change things around. Get a ride here Wednesday night, 6 to 8. They're life-changing. So you can start reading one of the Bible and growing and learning what God says about these things. The next time you're tempted to sin sexually, pray to God to help you resist. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, God promises never to allow a Christian to be tempted by Satan beyond what they can handle. So we've got no excuse when we commit sexual sins. You can never blame God for falling into sexual immorality. I can honestly tell you that I have never sinned sexually without knowing I was sinning. I chose every time to sin. Lastly, keep your thoughts pure. As we read earlier, Jesus says that simply lusting about someone is the same as having sex with them. I know many of you aren't sexually active with the opposite gender yet, but I don't think you want me to know what thoughts you're having about them. Right? So what's Jesus saying? Your thoughts are just as important as your actions. According to Jesus, all inappropriate thoughts about other people, lust, is a very serious sin. Go ahead and close your eyes. As young Christian men and women, you are called to be different than the world, to be holy. When you're tempted to sin sexually, from now on, remember Joseph and run away. That's a sign of strength, courage, and self-control. Not weakness, that the world says it is. When you're tempted to sin sexually, whether it's to lust after someone in your mind, look at porn, or have sex. Think about God and your future husband and wife. You want to be able to give them the greatest gift you can on your wedding night. Your purity. You want sex to be a beautiful thing to enjoy with your future spouse that bonds you together physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Remember how strong the tape was when I first bonded into the podium. That's how you want your marriage to be. Use your bodies to glorify God and save your purity for your future spouse. In response today, look up on the screen. If you have ever hated someone else, you have broken the sixth commandment. Do not murder. Hating someone is the same as murdering in Jesus' eyes. Take a minute to confess that sin to God in the spirit of repentance. And commit to never hate anyone again. I'll give you about 30 seconds to do that. If you have had sex with someone, you have broken the seventh commandment. Do not commit adultery. However, if you have ever lusted in your mind about another person, you have also broken the seventh commandment. So take a minute to confess that sin to God in the spirit of repentance, turning away from him, and commit to live a life of purity to God. Lastly, I want you to think of changes you need to make today to 
to live a life of purity. Some of you are under the slavery and chained by the slavery of evil that is pornography. And you look at it every night on your computer in your own bedroom. If you have a computer in your bedroom attached to the internet, get it out of your room as soon as you get home. Tell your parents, Mom, Dad, I want that computer out of there. Take it out right now. My purity is too important. Get it out of there today. There's other areas that you guys need to do. Girls, if you're having trouble sexting guys, you need to talk to your parents about blocking your data plan. Yeah, it's that serious. Your purity is that important. Your future husband or wife is worth it. So go ahead and I'll give you a few seconds to think of the change you need to make to live a life of purity starting today. Go ahead and close your eyes. Some of you in here aren't Jesus followers yet. So they're like, well, this is, the, this is God's plan to live, but I don't even know how to start. Well, you're not a Jesus follower yet. If you've never heard the fact that sin separates us from God, we're all sinners, we've all messed up, we're all born under the curse of sin before we've been born, we were under that. And that according to the Bible, even though we're all sinners, the penalty for being a sinner is death. And in the Bible, it doesn't just mean physical death, it means spiritual death, eternal separation from God and hell. It's a real place of unimaginable suffering. We don't want anyone else to go there. But God, in his great love for each and every one of you, sent his only son, Jesus, to be born as a human on the first Christmas 2,000 years ago. And he grew up and he lived a perfect life. He never sinned. He was the only innocent one. We were guilty. We deserved to die for our sins. Jesus was innocent. But because he loves you so much, he chose to take the penalty that we all deserve. And he died, and he chose willingly to die a brutal, agonizing humiliating death on a Roman cross and he bled and he suffered for you because he loves you. He wants to save you from hell. He wants you to spend eternity with him in heaven someday. He wants to show you a better way to live now on this earth. The story doesn't end there though. On the third day, God raised Jesus from the dead, defeating Satan and death once and for all on the first Easter before ascending back to heaven where 2,000 years later, Jesus is alive and reigning in glory at the right hand of God the Father. He wants you to join him there someday. But first, you need to take a step of faith. It's been said that if the path to heaven was 100 steps, Jesus would pick you up and carry you 99 of those steps. It's Jesus who draws you here. If you're not a believer, you're not here by accident today. Jesus has you here for a reason. He's drawing you to himself. But Jesus will set you down before the finish line and say that 100th and final step is for you and you alone to take. You need to make the decision. Your parents can't make it for you. I can't make it for you. Even Jesus can't make it for you. You need to make it yourself. Some of you think that you're saved and that you're going to heaven just because your parents are Christians or because you go to church or because maybe you were sprinkled in a church service when you were a kid with water in a baptism service and somebody said that means you're going to go to heaven. Sorry, the Bible makes clear none of those are going to get you to heaven. The only way is by putting your faith in Jesus. You can do that today by praying the sinner's prayer. If you're saying, yes, I want that pastor and I want to be saved from my sin and spend eternity in Jesus' heaven and live for him. All you need to do is sign up and repeat the words of Jesus' pray. Name in their hearts. Ready? Here we go. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and that I need a Savior. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. We're raised from the dead on the third day. And Jesus, I accept you today as my personal Savior. Save me. Forgive me of my sin. Change me. And help me to live for you every day for the rest of my life. Amen. All eyes closed. No one looking around. I'm not going to embarrass anyone. But if you prayed that prayer with me just now, you meant it for the first time. You now belong to Jesus. The moment you die, you can have complete assurance that you'll be in the presence of Jesus in heaven someday. I want you to proud of this decision. It's the most important decision you'll ever make. More important than where you go to high school, more important than where you go to college, more important than what job you'll have to Yes, it's even more important than who you'll marry someday. Because this decision you just made here on February 15, 2015, is the only one that lasts in this life and the next. I want you to embrace this decision. Not be ashamed of Jesus, but be proud of your decision. All eyes closed, no one looking around. If you prayed that with me for the first time, would you raise your hand up here in the count of three? Ready? One, two, three. Hold nice and high. The leader's going to tap you on the shoulder. Everybody else, keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. If you get tapped on the shoulder, look at the leader. They're going to talk with you. The leader's going to need one more over here. 
Anyone else? Raise your hand nice and high. Awesome. The leaders are going to talk to you about eight groups. Definitely, Father, thank you for these students. I pray that these were genuine first time decisions for you, that they are uh, world changing decisions for you, that you not only change their lives, but you'll change those around them. And lastly, most importantly, that these are lifelong decisions for you, that they'll live for you for the rest of their life and grow in their faith. For you. I pray that these students get connected this week in Ethan groups so you start growing a community and fellowship with other believers. I pray for the rest of these students, Lord. I pray. You know, confessing the sins. I know I've hated people. And I've confessed that sin to you. I'm guilty of murder. And help the students who are currently enslaved to hatred, the bitterness, and evil thoughts that come from that. I pray that you would release them from that and show them a better way to live. Secondly, like I pray for all the adulterers in this room. I'm one of them. I pray that you would free us from the enslavement that our sexual sins cause us. Remember that guilt's not from you, it's from Satan, but that you do have a better way for us to live. And I pray for purity in all of these students' lives and in their future marriages. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Father 7, 2015, we are. Here's our first shot.
basketball, but it was still pretty funny. So this is our three free, free, free v three event. So usually we require that you guys bring one for our O squares, but for this, this is a little bit different. We're gonna bring two, okay? So you have three v three basketball. It's kind of hard to do two v three because then you'll probably lose, and that sucks, and everyone will laugh at you if you lose. So you really want to bring two, so you have a three v three game. Here's the thing, though. The two that you bring, they have to be people that do not go to church already, okay? They have to be people that are not Christians, who have not accepted Jesus, because at the end, we're actually going to sit everyone down, and we're going to share the gospel like we just did today, and we're going to give them the chance to accept Jesus, and I know some of you did that today, and previously, all of you who already have, you know how awesome it felt when you did that. Um, we want to give people who haven't done that yet the chance to do that so that they might be in heaven for eternity with you, all right? It's really important that you that you guys bring two people who don't go to church to be on your basketball team, all right? If you don't want to play basketball, you don't have to play, but we still encourage you guys to bring some friends. It's going to be a lot of fun. This is March 27th or 29th, I don't remember. Whatever it is, it's Sunday. Um, I think it's the 27th. From 4, 3, 4 to 6, I think. Four to seven. Four to seven. The 29th. March 29th. Four to seven. There's spin all over the place. So that's what it is. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have some handouts in the back. We'll hand you guys so you can start passing them out to your friends. Uh, next announcement is, there it is, Eagle Groups. Who's been coming to Eagle Groups? Raise your hand. Awesome. Mr. Scott, my back over there, has been coming. He's one of the leaders, actually. Uh, if you haven't been coming and you don't know what it is, it is Wednesday nights from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. So we meet in uh, groups of same gender and age. So 7th grade boys, 8th grade boys, 7th grade girls, 8th grade girls. Really good chance to sit down with each other, to dig into the Bible a little bit deeper, and go farther in your faith. Again, some of you have just accepted Jesus today. That is really awesome. I'm so proud of you guys. And if that's you and you're not coming to Eagle Groups, really good opportunity, really good chance to do that, uh, to learn more about God and take your faith a little deeper. All right, here's the thing, though. For our O squares, our outreach outings, how many do we bring to, bring to those? Justin, how many? One. Awesome. Um, with that, underneath your chairs, some of you have, most of you, I think, have a Pray for One card. So go ahead and pull that out real quick. Let's take a look at that. So this Pray for One, this is uh, Pastor Dan's campaign. He's the adult pastor at our church. Now, notice the cool shirt that I'm wearing, Pastor Adam has been wearing. Pretty cool. Um, so this is, this is our campaign. Uh, you pick one person outside of your family that's not a Christian, who doesn't know Jesus, and so that's the first step, you pick them, have a person, you walk up to them, ask them, how can I pray for you? So that's number two, specifically, get a specific answer, how can I specifically pray for you? Um, what would it take that if I prayed to God and He answered your prayer, would make you know that God loves you, that would get you to come to church and get to know Him more? So specifics. And then number three is you walk up to them and you uh, you follow up with them. Hey, how is this going for you? How is this area in your life going for you? And so, uh, if you have that one person in your life, uh, this could be your bring one that you're trying to get to come to church or you are currently bringing. That's good. Go ahead and write their name down on the card. And when you go and ask them, how can I specifically pray for you? You can hand the card to them. And then also, for our O squares, that's the first half of the game. So we got, again, we got two halves in it. That's the first half. You get them to the O squared, to the fun, uh, elevated sports, you know, all the word ball, Buffalo Wild Wings, ice skating, whatever the girls do, I don't know. That's the first half. The second half is this. You gotta bring them to eco groups. Because if they're just coming to the fun events where we don't talk about Jesus, uh, they're never gonna know about Jesus. And Pastor Brian, the Woodenville campus pastor, at our church says this. If you have 10 people in your group, so 10 regular eco group members who are Christians, and only one of them brings a friend who doesn't go to church, the other nine don't bring friends, there are nine people that are potentially going to go to hell. You know, it's kind of heavy. But here's the thing. Some of, me, some of my guys were asking, well, there's going to be other chances in the future, right? We don't know that. The Bible says that Jesus might be coming back soon. No one knows when he's going to come back. And so that's why it's so important for us to take every opportunity we can to get our friends who don't know Jesus to get plugged into church so that they might know Jesus. You guys with me on that? You guys help, help us out with that? You guys got to go to your schools because you guys can reach your friends there. Well, Pastor Adam and I can. We need your guys' help, okay? Awesome. Uh, next announcement is SLT. If you're on the SLT student 
leadership team. We have our meeting today, 1.30 to 3.30, over in the old student center. And then uh, next is Travel X. We have the lovely Miss Rachel Creary. High school, high school intern. She is, she's lovely. She's gonna tell, tell you a little bit about this wonderful event. Take it away, Rachel. Set down my cereal. How are you guys doing? Afterwards. Nothing? Great! Well, in that case, you guys should totally come to Tribal X. Um, it is our, I guess you could say, like, into the spring retreat. What we do is all of the 8th graders, um, all the boys will be staying at a house, and then all the 8th grade girls will be staying at a house. Um, all weekend, and it's going to be, let's see, February 27th to March 1st, so it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then all weekend, you're going to be with your fellow 8th grade students, and you're going to be competing against everyone else in high school. So all the 9th grade girls um, are going to be staying at Elha, so you'll be competing against them. And then all the 10th grade girls, all the 11th grade girls, etc., etc., all the 12th grade boys, all the 9th grade boys. Everyone's separated into gender and age. Um, at different houses, but you guys go chill there at nighttime, and then during the day you're here at the church. And what we do, uh, we just hang out. Uh, there's lots of games. We're actually doing a derby car race, so you get to build your own derby car. And it's really rad because we always have awesome activities that you have to do during the race, like drink gallons of soda and die. Except for we're not doing that this year. This is horrible. Last year, everyone threw up. Anyways, but. It's a lot of fun. You guys should totally come. It's only $45, so you gotta register at tribalx15.com. But, uh, eighth graders, this is a great way for you guys to kind of get plugged into high school, so you guys have that jump next year. Um, and this is just our prelude to Water X, which is basically the most rad summer camp that you will ever attend in your life. So sign up, tribalx15.com. You'll also find other information there. Feel free to talk to your leaders about it because they will tell you guys too. Anyways, awesome talking to you guys. We'll see you guys soon. Everyone give it up for Rachel. Those are really good announcements. She really did it. Alright, with that, um, y'all, if you're not following us on Instagram, go ahead and do that. Uh, whip out your phones real quick. Go back to join our text list at 40650. Join J High at 40650 if you're not already. With that, y'all are dismissed. We have our, uh, I think we have an offering bucket back there if you brought any uh, tithes and offering. All that stuff, y'all are good.